Hello, God bless you. Glad that you're here. My name is Steve, and I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship in Brooklyn, New York. And it's time for today's Daily Devotion. Our Daily Devotion series is where we take a chapter from the Bible and read it together each day. Currently, we're reading through the Gospel of John, and today we're reading John chapter 5. So each video in this series is one chapter of the Bible, and then each chapter from a particular book are organized into a particular playlist that comprise that book. So uh, we have a playlist for all of Matthew, all of Mark, all of Luke. We're working on John now. As I said, it's John chapter uh, 5 today, and it's about 47 verses, as I recall. It's about average length. In, uh, in John chapter 5, we'll see Jesus heal a man on the Sabbath, and that creates uh, some conflict with the religious leaders. He claims then to be the Son of God, which escalates that conflict. And then Jesus shares about, um, points to witnesses who provide credibility. He says, if I testify about myself, uh, nobody cares. But there are many other witnesses to me. So let's read together now John chapter 5. It begins this way in verse 1. Afterwards, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city near the sheep gate was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches, and one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, Would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone always gets there ahead of me. The belief at the time was that when the water stirred, uh, whoever got in the pool first would be healed. I can't, sir. Somebody always beats me there. Jesus told him, verse 8, Stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Instantly, the man was healed, and he rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath. So the Jewish leaders objected. They said to the man who was cured, You can't work on the Sabbath. The law doesn't allow you to carry your sleeping mat. But he replied, the man who healed me told me, pick up your mat and walk. Who said such a thing as that? They demanded. And the man didn't know, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. But afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and told him, now you're well. So stop sinning or something even worse may happen to you. Then the man went and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had healed him. So the Jewish leaders began harassing Jesus for breaking Sabbath rules, but Jesus replied, My father's always working, and so am I. So the Jewish leaders tried all the harder to find a way to kill him, for he not only broke the Sabbath, he called God his father, thereby making himself equal with God. And so Jesus explained, I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He only does what he sees his father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does, for the Father loves the Son and shows Him everything He's doing. In fact, the Father will show Him how to do even greater works in healing this man, and then you'll truly be astonished. For just as the Father gives life to those He raises from the dead, so the Son gives life to anyone He wants. In addition, the Father judges no one. Instead, He has given the Son absolute authority to judge so that everyone will honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Anyone who does not honor the Son is certainly not honoring the Father who sent Him. I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They'll never be condemned for their sins, but they've already passed from death into life. And I assure you that the time is coming, and indeed it is here now when the dead will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen will live. The Father has life in Himself, and He has granted the same life-giving power to His Son. He has given authority to judge everyone because He's the Son of Man. 
Don't be surprised. Indeed, the time is coming when all the dead in their graves will hear the voice of God's Son and they will rise again. Those who have done good will rise to experience eternal life, and those who have continued in evil will rise to experience judgment. I can do nothing on my own. I judge as God tells me. Therefore, my judgment is just, because I carry out the will of the one who sent me, not my own will. If I were here to testify on my own behalf, my testimony would not be valid, but someone else is also testifying about me, and I assure you that everything he says about me is true. In fact, he sent investigators to listen to John the Baptist, and his testimony about me was true. Of course, I have no need of human witnesses, but I say these things so that you might be saved. John was like a burning and shining lamp, and you were excited for a while about his message. But I have a greater witness than John, my teachings, my miracles. The Father gave me these works to accomplish, and they prove that he sent me. And the Father who sent me has testified about me himself. You've never heard his voice or seen him face to face, and you do not have his message in your hearts because you do not believe me, the one he sent to you. You search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life, but the scriptures point to me, yet you refuse to come to me to receive this life. Your approval means nothing to me because I know you haven't done God, you, you don't have God's love within you. I've come in my Father's name, and you've rejected me. Yet if others come in their own name, you gladly welcome them. No wonder you can't believe, for you gladly honor each other, but you don't care about the honor that comes from the one who alone is God. Yet it isn't I who will accuse you before the Father. Moses will accuse you. Yes, Moses, in whom you put your hopes. If you really believed Moses, you would believe me, because he wrote about me. But since you don't believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? That concludes John uh, chapter 5. Thanks so much for being here and participating in today's daily devotion. Hope you've been blessed, and I hope you'll join us again next time for John chapter 6. God bless you.